I'm gonna do some more runs. Past sub 27, I don't think this run, or sub 28, this run isn't gonna have that much more development in terms of times until uh, some new, maybe some small new tech or uh, strats are found. I think sub 28 is hard enough for Maxim to get, let alone anyone else. That's actually true, I see. That actually might be good, at least for the second boost. I could do a grenade instead of a Goss. Cause even Because then if I use the Go uh, Goss for the second boost, I'm still going to have... Uh, I'll, I'll have an extra SMG nade to damage Nihilanth with, so the damage that I'm missing from that using that Goss ammo shouldn't be too big of a deal. Oh my god. Yeah, uh, the stream is pretty young. I think I've only been streaming for like maybe an hour and a half, so... We're probably not even halfway down here today. So just letting you guys know, since I, I imagine a lot of people here don't follow me on Twitter or look at the Discord or anything, uh, I'm going to not be streaming tomorrow, but after that, I should be streaming pretty close to every day uh, for, the re for the summer until GDQ at the very least. And also, for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm going to be running this game at SGDQ as a race versus MSushi, who's another runner of the game. I'm also going to be running Quake there, so you're probably going to also be uh, seeing some Quake being streamed pretty soon. Thanks for the host, MSushi, by the way. So yeah, MSushi and I are going to be racing this game at uh, Games Done Quick. So, it's going to be a good time. We're both grinding, we're both getting better. How was your stream, Sushi? Any good runs? Hey, Spitta. Thanks for good luck. Uh, I just had a run that um, was 30.50, and I was... Uh, I was... Able to PB until the end of Lamb or until the end of Lambda, where I made some mistakes and that cost me too much time. And I was able to even uh, I was able to get almost get a PB while losing 30 seconds off my gold on surface tension in that run from messing up maximized D twice and also a bunch of other slot. You can't play ST onwards, dang. You should do some late game practice then. This is not a good start. 122 into this map is not very good. We can still get a sub 420 pretty easily, but we can probably at best get a 416 on this split. We get like a good setup and first try boost. Thanks for the good luck, Amita. I also got a new uh, gold today. Uh, I got a rails gold, a 1.2 second gold on rails. 255 is now my gold. I got a 118 into the first elevator, so it was pretty good up until that point, but I made some flubs later on. So, like, maybe around, like, a 115-ish without as many mistakes later on, and I can definitely get the sub-250 that I want. So I, I'm, I'm not necessarily expecting a PB today because I never expect PBs. It's just not good to set yourself up for an expectation like that. Just kind of, if it happens, it happens. But I could see myself getting one today. What are you sipping? That's just water. I very rarely am not drinking anything but water. It's just in a Starbucks cup because I use reusable cups. And I work at Starbucks, so I get these for cheaper. Also, this one is uh, a pride cup. And, uh... Yeah. Also, the middle of it disappears or something. I don't know how it actually looks on the webcam, but the middle of it might disappear because that's where it turns green. Two 
learning stuff's annoying, I see, but I think it would be worth it to just spend an afternoon just learning some new stuff. You don't even have to learn anything that's super complicated. It's like learn a few more not garbage strats. Like what you do on We Got Hostels is completely fine. What you do on a lot of maps is probably completely fine. You probably don't even have that much to add to your game. <laughs> what we're doing here is we're basically setting up our angle to do this trick called uh, test chamber skip before the cart comes up by lining ourselves up with a particular uh, set of pixels. And then we're going to try to get a frame perfect trick at 100 FPS that will launch us into the skybox. There we go. And if we can get that, we can go for another frame perfect trick, but I missed that one. So we're not going to have HP here. Which means that we are uh, missing that frame perfect trick that I just missed. Um, that one's at only 23 FPS, so it's not too hard. Um, it's going to lose me three seconds and we got hostiles later on. Roughly three seconds. Uh, so it's not too big of a deal that I miss it. Plenty of opportunities to save time elsewhere. It's not a very good AM time for me at this point. I'm pretty accustomed to getting lower times. 416s and lower at this point is pretty standard for me. But a 420 is perfectly acceptable for a start of the run. Doesn't really matter how good your first split is in this game. There's still, there's still another 25 minutes of the game to play, so... Any, anything can happen. That was clean. That wasn't clean. Rare good unforeseen where I am within a second of gold. And my gold isn't very good, so quite honestly it still wasn't fantastic, but we're getting better. I keep forgetting I need to not get the armor if I, uh, missed the jump bug. I have a lot of extra armor that I don't need right now, so I'm gonna have to intentionally hurt myself with a grenade, uh, in a future chapter. Because in this game, having armor, uh, actually mitigates how far you get boosted, uh, with grenades. And grenade boosts are quite important in this game to give you a lot of speed. So if we don't lower our armor before doing our next grenade boost, we're basically not going to get any boost from it. And normally I get this armor because I would be doing a grenade boost later on in this chapter uh, to save about half a second. But because we have so little HP, that grenade boost isn't worth doing. So instead of doing a grenade boost to go down this hallway about... A little bit faster we're just going to be ignoring it and we're going to be taking damage elsewhere so in this chapter we actually skip the entire chapter by doing an npc abuse where basically you can get npcs to open particular doors for you by making them scared of you so what we did there was we blew up the dude as soon as he opens the door in order to get through there and hit a trigger that makes the door not close Dang. There we go. Good idea. Didn't really think about the execution. Uh, unfortunately, our HP is now really bad, so we're going to lose a bit more time later on here. I need to learn a proper backup there for taking the appropriate amount of armor damage if I accidentally take too much. Because now my HP is pretty weak. I'm going to pretty much no matter what have to heal. So, I'm gonna hope that I get the first edge bug, because then that will mitigate my time loss related to this. That's fair. Like, the rats that you're doing are just kind of not good. Like, they're just obviously slow. Like, by a significant amount. Thankfully, we got that edge bug. So, an edge bug in this game is a uh, 
trick where basically in this game damage from taking fall from falling is calculated over two frames so for an edge bug you want to land on a platform for only one frame and if you do that then you'll slide off the platform and the platform won't do any damage to you to make it a little bit easier to get an edge bug we lower our fps to 20 which is the ideal number in order to do edge bugs it pretty much will always guarantee that they're possible without them being uh difficult And if you haven't noticed, FPS manipulation is a pretty significant factor of this game in terms of the speedrun. Uh, basically, the FPS in this game determines a lot of the physics that happen in the game. So the amount of damage you take from falling, um, what frames are active for specific parts of animations, or uh, even making NPCs turn faster is all tied to your frame rate. So, there's actually quite a bit of times in this run where you change your frame rate using a key binding in the game uh, to allow you to do a certain trick uh, or make a trick a lot easier to perform. Like, if you lower your FPS to 4, later on when there's trip mines that we have to avoid, we can just go completely through those trip mines by lowering our FPS to 4. Because the uh, an active frame where you are actually inside of the trip mine wire does not exist when you lower your FPS that much. So the game never thinks that you actually trip the, the trip mine. Because you never actually are inside the the laser. What's up, Connor? Yeah, that's the dicks. Okay, this is going to be my best ever fire button now. At 10.02, getting so close to that sub-10 fire button. It's only a matter of time before I get it. God, I love the Mother soundtrack so much. All of the Mother games have such good music. That was unfortunate. Still ahead after Blast Pit. Uh, being ahead after Blast Pit is super nice. My Blast Pit split is pretty good in PV, so being ahead after Blast Split is pretty solid. And being ahead after Power Up, even better. Because my Power Up split is also really solid in PV, so it's easy for me to lose a second or two on it. Even though it's such a short split. It was just super, super solid in my PV. That pretty much... my That Power Up is pretty much as good as it can be. The reason I was still 0.8 off my gold is because my gold does a really dumb strat that is pretty much never going to be replicated. Come on, dude. There we go. I really need this to stop being bad. A rough start to this rails, but we can recover. So, bad start to this rails, but if we play well for the rest of it, we should be able to be getting at least a little bit of time save. Oh my god, everything that could possibly go wrong on rails is going wrong. So what makes Rails really hard as a chapter is that pretty much every bunny hop you have the risk of having something happen that can completely kill your speed. So what has happened already is that I've hit corners, I've slid off the uh, little side platforms that I'm B hopping on, uh, died to lasers, died to enemies, pretty much anything that can go bad can go bad. Uh, and or have went bad, so this is gonna be a pretty decent amount of time loss on this split. Nothing substantial though. We can be ahead by the end of apprehension or probably residue. We should be ahead by the end of that one. Yeah, of course. I want to explain things and want to help people who don't understand or understand it. And my uh, informative commentary is 
always been pretty solid. Excited to teach people about this game at GDQ. Teach them how sick of a speedrun Half-Life is. Okay, it's, this is going to be a 220 roughly. It is not great, but it's okay. It's not bad enough that I'm going to be too upset. Half-Life sucks. Hard to disagree. But you low-key are not a huge fan of this run. Like, you would be running other things right now. <laughs> That's Celestin Portal. I know you think the run is dope. I just don't think the run, uh, this run is, like, actually... It, it doesn't seem like it's something that you are super into. I'm not even going to be 10 seconds behind. I'm surprised. So yeah, if you guys don't know Msuchi, Msuchi is one of the best Celeste runners in the world. He was the second place finisher at the recent pace event, and he has a really good PB of like 2840 something, I believe. So, if you guys don't follow Msuchi right now, you guys should go give him a follow, because he's an incredible runner. Much better of a speedrunner than I am, even though he is um, literally 8 years old. So I'd recommend giving MCC that hot follow. Because whenever, if and when he goes back to Celeste, you should expect nothing but incredibly high quality Celeste gameplay. Dude, she gets younger every time someone mentions his age. Yeah. Now that, right there, that's gaming. Thanks, Baku, for gifting a sub to MCC 100. 60 subs. That is wild. Baku, you are a madman. I greatly appreciate the continued support. What's up, Dustin? Dustin B8. Or Dust. Is it Dustin? It is Dustin. My bad. Is you've changed your name to Dustin B Echoes, and now it's Dustbin. So I gotta get used to everything. Oops. Okay, solid. 134. This is about as good as last run. But, last run was 7 seconds ahead at rails, but this run didn't fuck up apprehension at every possible turn, so that's, that's pretty good. Also, if you guys are into Half-Life 1 speedruns, you guys should definitely check out Half-Life 2. It's a much different run, much different movement. Pretty much everything is different. The runs are so entirely different. But they still have a very similar reason to enjoy them. And you can also expect a Half-Life 2 run at SGDQ, right after the Half-Life 1 run, by Wayzone, who is the current world record holder in the inbounds category in that game. What? Some I sure did hit something there. <laughs> Sixteen forty on apprehension. I don't know. It's not amazing, but Half Life Two is probably even more of an entertaining run to watch than Half Life One. Purely because the movement in that game is absolutely incredible. What's up, Alex? Alex4 is a pretty solid Twitch name. I gotta say, props for that one. You're dang, Sushi. Sushi bullying people in my chat. I don't condone this kind of behavior. Okay, actually, Alex, is the name in- is the L in your name an L, or is it a capital I? Because that actually changes how good the name is. It- it's- that doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't- 
<laughs> it's it, it's an L or a capital I. I can't. I still can't tell. Not I. Okay. I not I. Okay. Cool. Dude, this is a bad residue. Do so much better than this. We're still gonna be ahead, but not by nearly as much as we should be. We should be ahead by like five at least coming into this after beer being only two behind, but that's okay. We still have so much time to for the rest of the run that we can do this. Sub 30 is un very, very unrealistic, if not impossible, but still getting a good PB is definitely within reason. God damn it. Sloppy, sloppy. So here we need to drag a scientist back with us. But well, we need to make sure we are up far enough ahead of him. So we need to make sure we get to this map as quickly as we can. But not too quickly because we still want him to be able to follow us. The reason behind that is because we want him in... Oops, you're not dead. The reason is because we need... How is this fucking guy not dead? Wait, was he dead? I'm so confused about that man's state of living. This is a bad QA. Perfect, though. Perfect scientist placement. So yeah, I'm not gonna be saving any time here, which is unfortunate. Still ahead though, and we have a lot of time save on this split if we play well. But playing well on surface tension is possibly the hardest thing to do in this game, as you can tell. We're already off to a fantastic start. Alright, so that's already not a great start. We're about six seconds behind where we should be right now. But we can still easily recover and save some time on this split at least. No biggie about six seconds if we just play well for the rest of us. Maybe if we start playing well, we can save some time, but we have to actually start playing decently in order to do that. So there were a trick I did was called pipe to pipe where you basically do a self goss which is hurting yourself with the goss rifle in order to skip the entire cliff map by self damaging yourself in order to gain some height in order to make it to the very top and to the next pipe. Okay, hey, we're getting like a 125 into the next map so this is not too, too terrible. It's not amazing. But a 125 is definitely manageable. Okay. So this has been pretty mediocre so far. I don't expect to save much time. I don't know if I actually did this trick here correctly. Yeah, I did. So there's a trick there where you basically blow up the box that contains Goss ammo twice, once with an explosion and once with a shotgun. Uh, blowing it up twice on the same frame will cause the contents of the box to duplicate and drop twice. We do that with that box because it gives us Goss ammo, and we need Goss ammo in order to go fast. One of the most important aspects of the Goss is maintaining how much ammo you have in the weapon. 
Okay, I didn't shoot the second time, but that's okay. Just a time loss, but we can still do the strat. Okay, we can save some time with this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine cycles to be safest. Now we need to do a pretty hard bunny hop chain where we have to, basically we need to hit this launch pad but not lose any speed, which is quite tricky to do because we need to maintain all of our speed so that we can jump over this barrier and we need to get up here so we can shoot this door that calls it to blow open eventually. I missed shot there so I wasn't able to get a good door shoot and now this run is bad, but that's okay. We can still PD if we play well. And what's up, Elgo? Okay, I self ghost myself more times there than I would have liked, but that's okay. So basically, the rest of the run after we do the IHD trick, which is a trick that allows us to get uh, as much HP as we stand there for. Damn, I had a very large risk of crashing there. Um, it essentially allows us to get through the rest of the game using any sort of necessary means to go fast. Using any sort of grenade boost we want, any self goss we want. We basically have as much HP as we can actually work with. What I still think is really great about this trick, though, is it doesn't just straight up give you infinite HP. You still need to very be very careful about where you lose HP, how you use it. You need to definitely keep in mind how much HP you have left, because it's very easy to get to the end of the run, and as happened last run, uh, not have enough HP to actually do the final few maps. So you need to make sure that you're careful with where you're using your HP, even though you have so much of it. Which is something that I think is super great about this, because if you didn't have to focus on where you're using your HP, making sure that you're maintaining a good amount of it, this run would just kind of be autopiloting, doing as much fast shit as you possibly can, and that's not nearly as interesting, in my humble opinion. It might be more entertaining to watch someone do something like that, but in terms of the actual run, it actually it makes the run less of a mechanical, like a mechanic-only thing. You still need to be pretty careful about. A lot of stuff about and be pretty careful about your HP routing. Overall, this run is sick. That was probably faster than actually not landing on the platform. Also, that movement off the ladder was really interesting. Oh. Fast, good. Should save a good amount of time on this split. So what I did there was I threw a grenade into the corner of that little alcove there in a way that the grenade got stuck under, uh, got stuck under, uh, like a piece of the geometry. And when that happens, uh, when a grenade is stuck under a piece of geometry like that, it'll basically explode as if, uh, the entire radius will do the, ex the uh, damage as if it was on top of the grenade. I don't know how to describe it any other way. Basically, the entire grenade radius will do full damage instead of it incrementing downward as it goes farther out. So now with some good luck and a good interloper, this run should be a PB. We'll say though. Need some decent luck on this Gonark to make sure we don't lose a lot of time though. 
which is very possible. Like, we just got some, uh, I didn't, that wasn't bad. Like, I think I just didn't charge the goss long enough. If this run doesn't PB again, I'm not going to be too gutted because this run isn't very good. We're probably going to lose like two or three seconds on this, I guess. So we can actually skip the third phase of the Gonark fight by blowing up the floor. Basically, enti entities in this game that can, um, that die from a in-game event, like finishing off the Gonark, can actually just be destroyed just by doing stuff normally. The only exception to that is like the gates that the Gonark destroys um, during her fight. You can't destroy those for some reason. It's the one object in the game you can't destroy, which is really unfortunate because if you could, We'd be able to skip a good amount, if not all, of the Gonark fight, which would be really, really fast compared to what we do now. As it turns out, not doing a fight is faster than doing a fight. Okay, so here I'm going to play it a bit more safe, and I'm not going to go for uh, any unnecessary uh, SMG boost. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a Goss boost here to get a little bit of speed. Pick the grenade. Okay, this sh should be a PB. Not as big of one as I would like, but we'll see if Nihilanth allows us to PB here. gold cool my first pb in about 10 months sub 30 30 not really a good run but we were able to get a pb which is cool two new golds this run both in the late game and i finally have new splits to run against which is honestly even better First of many upcoming PBs. First of many. I'm happy that I was finally able to break the drought. I felt like I was, I've been hitting a wall in this game uh, ever since I got my last PB. To be fair, I wasn't playing very consistently, but it was hard for me to beat this time. There was like a solid few months where I just could not get past Blast Pit without being like 20 seconds behind. But now I'm pretty consistently being able to get out of Blast Pit by only being a few seconds behind at worst, so. This run is not going to be too hard to run against. Most of the same splits are bad. Like, really, this run isn't even that much different uh, than my PB. Early game is solid. Um, like, the early game is pretty good. Blast Pit is good. Uh, Rails is not good, though. Everything from Rails until Surface Tension is bad. And then pretty much the entire late game is solid. Not amazing, but it was okay. So most of my time save will be coming from the same splits. Apprehension to, or uh, rails to surface tension is the time save of my run, currently. Cool. Not quite top 10. I'm gonna save the demos, but I'm probably not gonna upload this run. Thanks for the GG's though, I'm pretty happy with the run.
Did I close Sherex? Oh, that's not how that works. Whatever. I need to make a bind for increasing the volume for the credits. Because the credits in this game are a fucking banger. I really love the credits theme in this game in Half-Life 2. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing more runs today, by the way. I'm not done with doing runs. I wanna do some runs against these splits. I currently have 24 seconds to save on surface tension compared to my gold. It's hard to do that. Surface tension is the next split I need to work on my consistency for. Uh, yeah, whatever. I quit the game for some reason. I meant to say disconnect, but whatever. It doesn't matter. I think that Half-Life 1 has a pretty phenomenal soundtrack. I don't know if I'd say it's better or worse than Half-Life 2. I haven't really had enough time to compare them.